I'm here at a top secret location because I am about to meet one of New Zealand's most famous conservation ambassadors. In fact, you could say he's a bit of a local celebrity. Let's go on and meet him. special about Sirocco in particular? He got a respiratory infection in the nest so they had to take Sirocco out and um, give him antibiotics and treat him and because of that he's a hand-read kakapo. So he's very used to people and he's very curious. They're very intelligent birds, um, parrots are in general and so it's his curiosity. He just enjoys coming around, spending some time with people. He's got a bit of a reputation for being um, a very friendly bird. You can see it's almost an owl-like face. Yeah. And also they have that sort of that disc around the eyes that would help their night vision um, when they're coming out at night to feed. And what do they eat? Um, just about everything in the plants. <laughs> <laughs> they, they're very versatile. Can you hear that noise there? It's talking to us. That's a scraking. So that's their communication sound that they make oh. between each other. Yeah. yeah, so that's really special to hear and make that noise. Yeah. They're the only leap breeding parrot in the world. So what um, does that mean? Basically it means that the males all congregate together and they have what's called arenas. So they have track and bowls and the males get together and they boom and chin and then the females come in to mate. The booming's a quite a low resonance sound. It can travel for up to four kilometres, so it's quite a distance. The females come in and mate and then they go away and um, raise the chicks all by themselves. So they can mate with more than one female as well, so that's very unusual. And also, um, they're a night parrot, which is, you know, kaka, po, in you know, a parrot, uh, po means night, so the parrot of the night, and that also is very, very unusual. Um, and they've got these amazing claws for climbing up the trees and the beaks for feeding. They'll go way up top of rimu trees, like 13 metres up into a tree, and forage through the canopy. We had some visitors here one time, some volunteers, and we took them down to see the phosphorescence at night. We get it in the water, and one of the guys was swimming, and then suddenly we turned around, and here was Sirocco running along the rails at the end of the jetty, and then suddenly he stopped, and he jumped. I'm going, oh! I thought I was going to have to jump in after him and do, like, you know, CPR or sort of mouth-to-mouth -mouth on a kākāpō. And um, I looked down over the side of the jetty, and he was swimming. He was doing, like, butterfly stroke with his wings, and he swam all the way back to the shore, probably about six to ten metres, and then he got up on the shore, shook himself off, and when you think about it, they would have had to swim in, for dispersal in places like Fiordland to get across rivers and places like that, but it's very unusual to see one, especially in salt water. You can see how he's um, using his bill there. Yeah. It's basically like a big juice extractor. Yeah, yeah. So he bites it and he sucks all the juice out and he produces what's called chews and spits them out down to the ground. Oh, it does it. So he uses his tongue, pushes it up against the, the top of his bill there. 